laughed at by your own father? King Charles's reaction on bringing back Prince Harry. Hello and a very warm welcome back to our Celebrity Tribute YouTube channel. Just today, King Charles was out and about visiting the University of East London Stratford campus. He was there to celebrate its 125th anniversary, and he found himself in quite an unexpected situation. As he was shaking hands with excited students and dignitaries, there was one young man who posed a really interesting question. He said, can you bring him back? It seemed like this question completely caught the king off guard. At first, he answered with a humorous who. But as the real purpose of that question became clear, he burst into laughter and he acknowledged the unique situation at hand. The king is well aware that everyone already knows that his relationship with his younger son, Prince Harry, has had some real ups and downs. It was only a couple of years ago when Harry and Meghan made the decision to step away from their royal duties and start this new journey abroad. But even in the face of challenging questions, the king stayed gracious and good-natured. This visit to the University of East London served as a reminder of his dedication to his responsibilities and his role as king. He unveiled a plaque, he opened a new hospital training hub, and he got to spend some time with the next generation of leaders. I can't imagine how difficult this situation is for the king, and it doesn't really seem to be a question of bringing him back. He is an adult now. He was the one who wanted to leave. And I guess he could also choose to come back if he wanted to. Why exactly does someone need to bring him in, though? Truth be told, I'm guessing the entire family is a bit relieved to be rid of him. I mean, and they're probably also not at the same time. I would be heartbroken if any of my kids were estranged from me. And I really feel bad for the king. And after the way Harry has attacked his family so publicly, I'm guessing the king is more than just a little bit heartbroken. It's interesting to me, too, that this young man did not bother asking about bringing them back. It was bring Harry back. See, even after everything Harry has done, people still much prefer him over Meghan Markle. Now, I thought it was impossible to despise anyone as much as I do Meghan. That is, until Harry's book and the interviews came out. So now, in my opinion, they're pretty much equal. They're just different. It has been three years now since the romance of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle started, and their relationship has already left quite the impact on their lives, both in the UK and in America. In England, Harry enjoyed quite a lot of clout thanks to the fact that he was sixth in line to the throne. In the US, Meghan did have the chance to become a successful actress. She got a few minor roles in television and film. But of course, after they got together, their lives changed forever. The royal family removed many of Harry's titles and honors, and now he's left with a paltry $60 million inheritance. Yes, I know. <laughs> anyway, Meghan, meanwhile, has given up on her acting career so that she could become a full-time royal. Now, the money that Harry inherited is really nothing in comparison to the wealth of the U.S., where actually there are seven times more billionaires there than in the U.K., and there are an astounding 21 million millionaires. It's pretty obvious that in their mission to have it all, Harry and Meghan have ended up with a lot less than they ever thought they would. They have had to sacrifice their royal titles, their wealth, and their future career prospects just for the sake of love. And the consequences of their choices are, I'm sure, going to be felt for many years to come. There are many people who have been asking questions and making assumptions about what's going on, but it's important to think about all the facts before coming to any real conclusions. Some may view it as being kicked out, but it's important to note that Prince Harry and Meghan were the ones who decided to step back from their official duties. They were the ones who wanted to embark on this new life. But the question still stands of why exactly would King Charles consider welcoming the two of them back into the fold when they have tried their best to harm the very institution that he is now the leader of? The king has made it abundantly clear that Prince Harry and Meghan are still much-loved members of the family, but they were the ones who wanted to live their lives overseas, and it doesn't seem like they want to come back. See, when they left, they thought they were going to be able to charge a million dollars per speech, and they figured Netflix was going to send them truckloads of money. But then, when they figured out they actually had to work to earn money, well, they decided maybe being stuck in the fishbowl was not so bad after all. And they also figured out that nobody was going to pay them anywhere near that much for any speeches from the two of them. Usually, word salad speeches do not earn a million dollars a pop. And how could we forget that it was Harry himself who said that his father and brother were the ones who were trapped? Harry also said that mm, he doesn't really like England anyway. But that's okay, Harry, because you know what? The people of England don't like you much either. 
Basically, he gave them what they wanted, and they are still whining about it. They wanted out of the confines of the royal family, but they still wanted the chance to come back as celebrities when it suited them. But the monarchy does not work that way, and the truth is it never has. They were also given a whole year to consider things, and they still decided they wanted to leave. From reading history books and from watching documentaries, I learned that a monarchy needs to have a method to survive. And one of the important things about a monarchy is they need to be a little bit secretive. That lends it some mystique and some mystery. And then there's an awe surrounding it where people are going to line up just to get a glimpse at them. And that's why there is an important rule to never, ever discuss private family matters. Well, it seems like Harry did not get the memo. And now how could the family ever trust him again? Harry is a blabbermouth. If Harry and Meghan had just accepted their roles in the family, if they could just accept the rules, and if they could follow the rules, then right now they could be enjoying state dinners, they could be wearing some fancy jewels and gowns, and they could enjoy spending their time in palaces surrounded by beautiful artwork. But now look at them. They're a couple of pariahs, and nobody trusts them. Nobody wants them around. I mean, people want to frisk them for recording devices or cameras whenever they come anywhere, because people know they're going to sell anything they can to Netflix. I do hope the king is smart enough to not invite the two of them to the coronation. That should be his day to just enjoy everything. He shouldn't have to worry about fighting with Harry or having to trust those around him. Harry and Meghan need to stay far away from the entire occasion. Last month, of course, Prince Harry's memoir Spare made quite the splash in royal circles. Harry's revelations about his stepmother Queen Camilla and his father's priorities sparked some real questions about whether or not he and Meghan would go to King Charles' coronation this spring. But in spite of all this controversy, King Charles still enjoyed his day in East London. During his visit to the university, he met with three babies and their mothers at the Baby Development Lab, which investigates the impact of urban living on early childhood. And when one of those little infants started crying, the king said, oh dear. And then the king went on to receive a warm welcome from local school children. They presented him with bouquets of flowers. One toddler stole the show by excitedly handing over their posy before the king could finish greeting the first student, which brought a smile to his face. So the king visited the University of East London's new hospital and primary care training hub, and that's equipped with wards that mimic real-life hospital care, including accident and emergency, intensive care, and maternity care, too. The hub is set to be a training ground for future NHS professionals on the university's nursing and physiotherapy courses. And then earlier in the day, King Charles and Camilla were greeted with quite a rousing reception as they went to the Brick Lane area in East London. There, they enjoyed the chance to meet with charities and businesses at the heart of the British Bangladeshi community, as well as people who were active in the anti-racism movement of the 60s and 70s. And finally, the king went back to Buckingham Palace and he had a historic meeting with the Ukrainian President Zelensky. That marked the very first time those two men had met. I would love to hear your thoughts on all of this. Please feel free to share your thoughts and feelings in the comments section. If you found this video interesting and informative, be sure to hit that like button and spread the word to other people who may find it useful. And if you want to make sure to stay up to date on everything related to the royal family, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and I look forward to connecting with you again sometime soon.